Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and lately Visual Studio Code have been just nailing it with updates, and it's that time again. Head on over to your Visual Studio Code and you will find it is probably time to restart to update. And this is because the oddly named March update, yeah, they're always one month behind on their naming convention here, but the March update was released basically last Friday. Uh, so really nice stuff in here. We're gonna jump in and take a look at the coolest new features of this release. In fact, this release has something I've been waiting for basically forever with Visual Studio Code, and that is this. I'm gonna head on over here. These are my extensions. What you're gonna notice here is I have a variety of extensions to update. And this has always been kind of an annoying thing with Visual Studio Code, because quite frankly, you do the update, and then you have to restart Visual Studio Code. Well, what you may notice now is you have this option, Restart Extension. So you can now install extensions and just basically restart that single extension. No more needing to restart Visual Studio Code to update each of your extensions. I love this. I don't know why it took as long as it did to get here. Probably a lot harder to do behind the scenes, but this update alone just makes the whole thing work for me. Now, another thing that we can do here, let's go check out um, a project here. So let's go open up this code, for example. And one thing that you'll notice here is you've got your, uh, your mini map here. And honestly, I don't really use the mini map that much because I, I don't look at my code aesthetically, I guess, to navigate through it. But this is gonna change things a little bit for me. What you can now do is put in a comment and call it mark, and then put your words in here, my important label, like so. And what you're going to notice is that mark will now show up in your mini map. So it makes navigating through your mini map a lot easier. So let's go uh, down here, mark another label, like so. And now you're gonna see pop. So you can pop between your labels, like so. Uh, if you're using TypeScript, there's another way of doing it, but basically pick whichever language you're working with. So if you're using Python, you do like a hash and then put that mark in the name of your label and done. I do wish it worked with like the existing like region type definitions, but still uh, very handy. If you are using uh, the MIP map for navigating your code, you can now easily put these labels in there as well. And speaking of labels, that's another functionality that was added in here. So let's go up here to your preferences. Now, if you're using it for game development, like, you know, this channel's all about, you're probably not going to find this that useful because the situations don't arise that much. But if you're using, um, let's say you're working on a web project where you might have like index.html or something equivalent, you may have like nine of them inside of your project. Uh, and then when you open it up, it shows up here in your tab as... Uh, you know, index.html, you, you have to tab over it, like highlight over it to get the extension to figure out what the hell kind it is. Well, now what you can do is actually set up these custom label patterns. So basically you can pick the, uh, the directory area hierarchy and then the file name, and then you can give it an alias on the other end. So you can actually have it label out. Uh, so it gets to be index and then the folder that it's in or something like that. So if you're working in a project where you have a bunch of different, um, or a bunch of files that are in exactly the same names open at the same time, but in different locations, this is going to be a godsend for you. Personally, not something I'm going to use a lot, but I can definitely see the value, especially if you are working, again, on web, where it's really common to have something like index being used over and over and over again. Uh, this is going to make determining which one very, very nice. Now, this next feature builds on one of my favorite features from uh, two releases ago. So what we've got now is the ability to come in here and you can actually break off tabs. So if you're working with multiple monitors, this one is an absolute godsend and it's functionality that I've been waiting for basically since Visual Studio Code was first released. So you've got the ability to undock and break away multiple different tabs. Now the problem used to be in the past it only worked with like text, code, that kind of thing. Well that has changed and we're going to need these anyways. I'll go through the release notes in just a second but let's go ahead and open up the release notes. Now this is the kind of window this HTML5 rendering and markdown rendering that kind of stuff wouldn't work before. So now what you can do is this and then boom, drag it off and it will render. Now, one thing to be aware of with the way this works though, uh, it will automatically do a refresh of the page when it's broken off. So when I put this tab back in over here, it will automatically uh, reload it one time. Not a big deal, just one of those things to be aware of. So those are the highlight, those are the coolest new features in my opinion, but there's some other stuff in here to look at. So we got, again, custom labels, uh, lock scrolling, so you can compare side by side with synchronized scrolling, so you can see so you can have scroll lock scrolling turned on, and then when you scroll one, it will scroll the other. I, honestly, I, I don't really know the use case here. If you can think of why that this is important, I would love, well, I guess they're, yeah, 
So you you want to do it if you're doing a line by line comparison. I guess that does make sense. So that is a new feature you can lock and unlock. So you scroll things at the same time. So if you want to compare two things, you can now do that in the scrolling style. Uh, you have uh, extension updates. Again, no longer needing to reload Visual Studio Code to update an extension. Mwah. Perfect, I love that. Uh, the native code coverage support in uh, Visual Studio Code for test coverage. Uh, folder marking, we saw that earlier on. Uh, quick search improvements, so sticky file path separators and separator buttons. Uh, you can run all cells in a notebook section, and we got improvements to copilots, of course. Python auto detect improvements, and uh, start a copilot inline chat conversation directly from the terminal. Now, I'm not sure what I think of all this copilot stuff actually being considered as part of Visual Studio Code updates. I think it should be an extension because copilot is definitely one of those optional things. But obviously, Microsoft wants you to use copilot, so they're trying to sell you on it, and they're doing the updates directly there. But personally, I think that these should be separate. I think they should be extensions and so on, but that's just my opinion. I'd love to hear your opinion on it as well. As you can see, I'm not using Copilot anymore. I actually switched over to Codium and I did a video on that as well. I love Codium so far. It might not be as powerful, but it's also less in my way, I find. But uh, so I kind of do wish that the Copilot stuff was separate personally, but I can understand why it's integrated. But I'm curious what you think of its integration. What do you think of this update? So again, some really nice things here. Uh, the custom labels uh, for multiple different files of the same type, definitely useful there. Locked scrolling, the updates without having to restart, that is absolutely lovely. Just in general, uh, Visual Studio Code has been just releasing banger updates in my humble opinion. And I love the fact that now this undocking, uh, I'm actually gonna undock it completely, but the ability to undock all kinds of files, including you know rendered files, definitely an improvement there as well. So that is the Visual Studio Code March update uh, for early April. Let me know what you think of the way that Visual Studio Code is improving, or do you not think it's improving? Let me know that as well, and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.